Hello, Akron fans! This is Shadow 3 with another exhibition match for you guys. It's going to be, well, exhibition match stream. First match is going to be between Monkuki and Cyber Night Pony on Tomb of Heroes, which you should all know very intimately by now. I don't think I've gone a single night in the last few weeks without casting a game on this map. Monkuki in the east side of the map, going for Vekir. Cyber Night Pony in the west side of the map is going for Ciso. Nothing surprising here, both players going for their best species. Well, looks like fairly standard. Just way that these guys are going to be playing. Nothing too out of the ordinary yet. We do have Mon Cybernetic Pony going over with his Special Ops and Marine. And Monkuki is going over with all three of his infantry as he always does. I'm quite certain I did not cast this specific match before, but to be perfectly honest, it can be a little bit hard to tell. Monkuki always does this every time every single time you know it's a monkey game because you get all the infantry going forward really the difference the differentiation between these games comes in when monkey actually chooses to retreat if he chooses to retreat so any point going for a quick factory after four rps this is a probably gonna be echoed out it's a little interesting way of doing it on this iteration at least we'll see if he actually sticks with it but it would appear that he hasn't changed anything yet. He hasn't changed his mind yet. Monkuki, however, is going forward. I'm sure Cybernetic Pony is well aware that this is happening because Monkuki does this in every game. I don't. I can't recall a single match with Monkuki in it where he has not tried to do this. I mean, again, to the point where players pretty much can predict. And actually, Cybernetic Pony is going to be able to. S Ooh, wow, we'll get rid of the Teth Veer, and on the same path as the Shin Veer, the Zion Veer going north, separated from the other two. Monkuki would lose his Shinvir and thus destroy the entire strategy if he goes forward, and it looks like that's likely to happen. And yeah, once, well, you see it happening again. Where Cyber Pony comes in, and Monkuki really can't do anything about it. His Zionvir up north, not coming south, and really wouldn't come in in time. Shinvir and Tethvir are kind of doomed. Monkuki needs to just change this up. And Monkuki, back at the 258 mark, has a Lancer in, has built a Lancer, and is... Oh, he's going back to the 136 mark, so we don't know exactly what he's building after that point. But still, a Lancer coming in, not a bad idea. And he knows exactly what Monkey is up to, but honestly, he could have assumed. And he has successfully gotten rid of the Shin Veer as well, so Monkey back at the 18 second mark. Is he retreating his infantry? That is what matters. Because if he's not retreating these infantry, there really isn't anything to say about it. At all. Like, he is basically going to lose. Like, he can't do anything from here. And no, it looks like he is sending his Zion Veer down explicitly sending it down south that'll help a bit but not really sure how much it'll help Cyber Night Pony is well equipped to handle anything and he knows what's happening he knows everything that's happening actually further in the future he thinks he's won 320 mark he's pretty much destroyed Cyber Night Pony's base Cyber sorry Monkey's base Monkey well he has retreated at least with his Zion Veer moving his Teth Engine Veer forward but definitely aborting that plan not bothering with it which is expected, but he didn't even get inside Cyber Night Pony's base except with Zion Veer further in the future. He echoed Zion Veer into Mo Cyber Night Pony's base. He knows what Cyber Night Pony is building ish. He knows Cyber Night Pony isn't doing anything super crazy. And Cyber Night Pony, he does have a decent amount of Q Plasma, but still, 6 and 3 isn't that unusual. There's really not much to comment on here. He's going to likely go for machinery upgrade and then probably tanks and tornads from there. It's a common thing for CISO to do and a fairly safe thing as well against Vekir. And a mech as well, so we'll see a macrofab soon up. Monkuki, on the other hand, the one minute mark. We need to get a deep up fairly soon. Possibly get another Teth of Year or so in here to actually deal with the Lancer. I mean, Cybernetic Pony, from his point of view, has outright won at the five minute mark. If Monkuki does nothing, he, he's going to lose by the five minute mark. But Monkuki, paying attention at this point in time, seeing what's happening, seeing a Lancer coming in. We'll see what he does further in the past. Right now, actually, at the 125 mark, he will be building something that's that kind of goes without saying he's got to build something that or to lose I don't think he's gonna plan on doing that though I honestly losing planning to lose is poor long-term strategy it's just fairly straightforward anyway Monkuki is wait what no no that's Teth and Shinveer only his Zion Veer staying at home so nothing too unusual about this yet but we'll check back on Monkuki when he actually starts doing something Notable, I suppose. Okay, keeping his units back, keeping everything back, getting a depot, foundation. Alright, there we go. This should help against the Lancers. Lancer is still incoming. 
But with Depot Foundation, we should be able to well, Foundation up. If he gets a Depot in here, that'll help. Right now, it's a little bit risky to do so. Getting some Cube Plasma to support Vehicle Construction, and he is getting a Depot! This is not going to be done in time for the Lancer to come in. He does have his Teth Veer at home, however, so that will help. 5 and 2 compared to Cybernetic Ponies 6 and 1. Magui isn't really behind when it comes to RPs. However, he did just lose the Teth Veer before the Lancer came in. Yes, be careful about that. Really just pull that back. I don't know why his Shin and Teth Veer are so far forward. His Zion Veer should be the one that's more forward with the Teth Veer a little behind and the Shin Veer well in the back. Just because of the range advantage. And another Zion Veer coming in. The Depot is halfway done and the Lancers arrive. Well, the infantry arrive. However, the Zion Veer in front of that does help a bit and the Teth Veer still in a poor spot, but at least it's... Okay, well, it does die, but the Lancer should go down to the Shin Veer, and ultimately Monkuki will survive this attack, rather than having it lose him the game. Now, Severny Pony, well aware of this, see what he does at his point of view to change. Lancer is still moving forward, back in his base, he does have HHD coming in, he does likely have... Well, we saw already he's going to be going for the machinery tech and everything, get the imports, get the armory, get machinery tech, all that stuff. Hey, normally does this, it's... Third Q Plasma RP being built. But at this point, going for another ATHC and has retreated to the Lancer, which is good. Admittedly, he'll take a little while to get the Macrofab up for the MFP to repair it, but yeah, he will retreat that, so he's not going to be losing it, which is good. Also, getting a bit of mind games, what he normally does kill the Comm Hub at the northwest side of the map. Macrofab is up for Cybernetic Pony, and machinery has been researched. The Cybernetic Pony. Doing just fine. Monkuki back at the six minute or sorry, the four minute mark, two minutes down from there, getting an aerial control center. Which will be interesting. Because he's probably expecting Cybernetic Pony to go for Tornod, and if Cybernetic Pony does go for Tornod, then the aerial control center is a great idea. But Cybernetic Pony can also go for tank fairly easily. And of course ATHCs, which are good against air. There's not much to really say about that other than really comes down to Monkuki getting some good units. And also, like I said, Cybernetic Pony not getting a lot of anti-air. We'll see what he goes for, though. We are at the 4-minute mark. He is about 30 seconds down from Mon Kuki at this point. Just getting his factory up. Not getting the third army this time around. Getting Sorry, third importer this time around. Getting the armory, or if he had a third importer. No, never mind, he didn't. This is always an armory. Still with the armory. Nothing changing here. Getting another mech, though. And, no, wait. What the heck? Darn it. Okay, well, whatever that iteration was, we don't see it anymore. Doesn't matter. Well, actually, it does matter, but I can't do anything about it. Oh, well. Anyway. Mo Cybernetic Pony still going for some harassment, though. Trying to take out some of Monkuki's QPRPs. A good target in general, but particularly for Vecure, due to the fact that QP is necessary for every vehicle, and vehicles are basically necessary to play. Halcyon Class getting research from Monkuki as well. Just finished at the 5-minute mark. We'll see what he goes for with that. I'm guessing he's probably going to go for a... Oh. Honestly, I'm guessing he's going for a Zion Halcyon. The Aero Control Center is probably not for Shin Halcyons along with Halcyon class. It's probably going to be Zion Halcyons. That's usually what's gone for. Against ATHC is not a bad idea. They are... I mean, Zion Halcyons are basically tough Zion Pulsers. They're... Like... They don't quite match DPS for cost, but they're definitely much stronger. And there is a Tornade, so the Aero, Aero Control Center will be at least somewhat useful. But Frigates, if they come up, and well, when they come up, will also be handy. However, Martank's coming up, so air units are necessary. Monkuki, he hasn't actually... Okay, he's going for a Shin Hal... Oh, he is going for Shin Halcyon. Well, that is a surprise. We don't often see Shin Halcyons. Zion Halcyons and Shin Turchers, yes, but not Shin Halcyons. All right. Zion Pulsers and Shin Halcyon. That is Monkuki's mix. At least at this stage. Which is interesting, to say the least. It will help out against the Twin Mar that's inevitably going to come out. Or, yes, inevitably. Separating point, he does have ground units, so Twin Mars are in inevitability. And of course, infantry into tanks, as Cybernetic Pony tends to do. It's very interesting. Always good to see that. I like to know that they're being used. It's, just, it's nice to know that those mechanics are being used, you know? For a long time, no one really stuffed infantry into tanks, but it's nice to see that someone finally is. Anyway. Tornod coming in. Not able to do too much as a result of the Shin Halcyon and Teth Veers. Although... Teth Veer, sorry. Although... No Teth Vehicles. Not surprising, Teth Veer are the strongest... Not the toughest, but they are the strongest anti-air unit that Vekir has. That being said, Teth Halcyons were buffed up recently, and they there is one of them right now! Teth Halcyon being built up alongside the Shin Halcyon. Shin Halcyon checking the northwest or north center side of the map, not the northwest quite yet. 
Northwest will likely come afterwards, and no, it doesn't. Going south from there and actually not checking the Northwest, which is where Cybernetic Pony is, in fact, expanding. Is getting an RP there. Probably going to get a few more, as well as getting it over to his natural further south from his main base. Along with Factory Macrofeb, well, Cybernetic Pony only doesn't actually have that much production. I don't think he's going to go for Gate Tech at this point, but he does need probably another factory to really use up the resources he has, at least with these extra importers. And the extra base is getting to the north and over to the south. Not quite natural, going to the southwest instead. And a tank is going around, well, okay, a tank was going around here, which will be hitting the Tornod. Not so relevant, and Shin Halcyon just getting rid of that without issue. And Teth Halcyon has been built up as well, so Monkuki is focusing on his Halcyon class. Getting his very heavy units, sending those out, and just using that. Making that his game. Also, going around the south with the Zion Pulsars, he's not found any of the expansions yet, though. Didn't find the northwest one, he could have, but he didn't. And he might intercept the southwest one. The Marine is on its way. Zion Halcyons might end up intercepting it. If they do, that should help. Cybernetic Pony hasn't really built up a whole lot, assuming the existence of that expansion yet. Nothing's really going to be undermined, but still... I don't know. Gotta say, though, there is... There's a lot Cybernetic Pony is building. He has a decent economy. He is getting a growing economy. Likely going to expand here once he gets a couple more units. When he actually does so, it's going to be difficult for Monkuki to get back in. Monkuki has no expansions. And he didn't intercept. He did not intercept. Double check from his point of view. And no, he's not even looking. He has no knowledge of this Marine. Or if he does, it's... Well, just in sight range. Not, no, I can't be right. Sight range is attack range. That's unusual. How did it not... No, okay, it looks like the Marine actually did take the south ramp. And as a result, avoided the sight of the Zion Pulsars. Though Monkuki ultimately able to intercept this, moving into the base on an edge attack, hits the Marine, takes out that expansion, and will be attacking from the south. However, Twin Mars will stop this pretty much cold. I'm going to try to deal with the MFB, which is not a bad idea, but the MFB has 425 health. It won't even be able to kill it before they all die, thanks to that Twin Mar. And Tornado's coming for extra support, and that is that attack out. Shin Halsey coming from the north at the same time. And the ATHC providing much less resistance. In fact, very little anti-air resistance exists. I don't think any, really. Monkuki also getting gay tech at this stage. And this is about the time you do it. Ten minutes into the or nine and a half minutes into the game. Gay tech is not unusual. It's actually the nine minute mark had happened, but still not unusual. The ATHCs are posing a threat to the Shin Halcyons. Or Shin Halcyon, singular. Not a huge threat, but still a threat. Once it goes down, however, the Shin Halcyon is going to have very little resistance. That being said, Cybernetic Pony still has... He can build frigates. He could build mechs. I'm not sure if he's going to do... He does have a mech, however, and that mech is going to end the Shin Halcyon. Absolutely end it. Which is unfortunate. That's why I was a little bit concerned about the use of the Shin Halcyon. Slipgate, however, is happily constructed at the 10-10 mark. No further units being built up. Monkuki has very little in the way of army. He lost all the Zion Pulsars and a Shin Halcyon. I really think he was putting too many eggs in one basket with that one. Nothing built up to the north, and for Cybernetic Pony, there is. Cybernetic Pony building up a couple more RPs to the north. That expansion is not likely to be attacked anytime soon. Monkuki lacks the units to do with. He does have a slipgate. Knowing him is probably going to be for repel against the inevitable counterattack. But you know what? He might just decide to crow on a board. I doubt it, but he might just. And that would be... Well, that would be what he's likely doing, actually, at the moment. Yeah, judging by him pausing... And expenditure of current energy, I think he is going for an uppercut. Probably going to try to salvage the attack. I don't see it's working well, though. Yep, there is one... Sh well, a Shin Turcher getting uppercut. Or getting sent back to the past to help out with the Zion Pulsers. But unfortunately, not quite. Teleporting to an area that honestly does not matter. Unfortunately, Monkuki kind of wasted that one. Not sure it would have helped, but it, if it did... I know it might have, actually. I might have distracted the Tornadoes just long enough for the Shin... Nah, even then, the mech was the big killer for the Shin Halcyon. Yeah, Teth Searcher is a slightly better idea, but even then, hard to say. However, Tornadoes are coming in, and Cybernetic Pony is going for the counterattack. Though Cybernetic Pony waiting around... It looks like the counterattack had hit and actually was successful in the present. He, Cybernetic Pony did attempt a counterattack, but it didn't actually go through, or at least he aborted it. Interesting choice to do so. Does have a tank further down with the Marines. He does have turnouts from the north, and he is about to attack once again. There comes the attack at the edge. 
Ted Halcyon, ready to greet it, kills the Lancer, but that's not the main target. The main target, or main problem at least, is the Tornads. Monkuki, it looks like he's chronoported once again, sending back the Teth, Paul, Teth Churcher to the past to help out. Not going to help out too much, but at least it's going to be a bit of a distraction for the anti-air units. Possibly, at least. However, that being said, there is still a pretty powerful attack here. And Teth Halcyon being sent back as well. No sign of whether or not it's going to be actually teleported in. I don't think it was. Looks like it was just staying inside the base to help out with the defense. Now, Cybernetic Pony on the other hand, tagging the south as well, and with the Slipgate not actually on repel mode, and no auto defense or anything else in the base. Cybernetic Pony has free reign here. Looks like that's going to be a successful attack, though Monkuki might still have a chance. Kind of low chance, though. He does have a couple Zion Halcyons coming in. Not a bad idea. Actually, Zion Halcyon and Zion Pulsar. That's a better idea. A couple Zion Pulsars, actually. Or actually, a couple Teth Pulsars. Teth Pulsars, not only really Zion Pulsars. But at the same time, Cybernetic Pony just getting further and further ahead. He has two bases. He has not really lost a whole lot of units compared to Monkuki, and there's really not much more that can be said there. Monkuki does have his Corona Ports that came in, but even with that, we are checking out the Corona Ports that happened. The Teth Searcher does act as a bit of a distraction. It's actually being somewhat useful. It does keep the Shin Halcyon less dead. Zion Turchers all die, and... Sorry, Zion Pulses all die. No Zion Turchers in this game. And... The Shin Halcyon... Teleported back to base. Manages to escape this time around. And the Teth, Bol Teth Halcyon, for some reason, being sent forward. That was a mistake. Why did he send it forward? That really did not help at all. However, the Teth Halcyon... The parent Teth Halcyon might have a bit of a chance to d defend, but not really. Monkuki watching helplessly as that Teth Halcyon gets sent back to its death. Jump forward to the 1330 mark right at the unplayable past edge. And watches as the Zion Halcyon inevitably dies. And this is game. This is just game. There's nothing Monku can do at this point. He hasn't got the resources to really make anything work. He didn't have the units ultimately. Or actually, initially and ultimately, he didn't have the units. Does have more being produced, but Cybernetic Point just has him surrounded. He has units on all sides. He has no real anti-air threat. The Zion Halcyons don't do much against air. Yeah, that's basically game. Yeah, Mongoogie throws in the towel, or GG's. And that's... He's gonna surrender any time now. Any time now. Well, he's GG'd at any rate, so that's... That is game, I hope you enjoyed that. There we go, game over. Player 1 has surrendered, so... That was game 1 of another game for you guys in just a moment. It will be between Catalyte and Rockmox, also on Tomb of Heroes. Get used to this map. It's, it's a popular map. It's popular for good reason. And the players are playing it once again. So we'll have that in just a moment. Stay tuned.